Butch Block, uh, showing you how the process of beef was back in the 60s up until I say the late 90s uh, with swinging beef. Uh, this right here is what you uh, the hind quarter. We have a total, we have a side of beef. This is the hind quarter right here. This is the front right here. What we're going to do today is we are going to show you, I'm going to break it down, we're going to piece it down, and I'm going to show you the pieces before we do anything with them, and then we're going to cut them and show you the finished product. All right, I'm going to start. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flank off. Okay, then I'm going to cut the, the, the beef soot off. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I am going to pull the sirloin tip out of the out of behind. You see this gland right here? When you come around, when you come around on your beef, you fill the knee bone, you come over here, you go all the way down to the bone, turn the knife, bring it all the way down till the knife stops. This in, in box meat is called a pilled knuckle, which you turn into as a finished product in the case as a sirloin tip roast. As I said, when you bring the knife down, you come down, you see this gland right here, you bring the knife out right where the gland is. And this right here is a piece of sirloin tip that, that's what it looks like before anything's done, before we make a roast. Later in the product, we will show you what the finished product looks like by trimming it and tying it. The next process what we're going to do is we're going to break the beef loin, the long loin, off of the hind. And what I'm doing here now is I'm putting my knife in between the pelvis bone and the H bone and I'm bringing it around and I'm coming down right here through here and we're bringing it down this way. Rico, get me the saw, please. This is Rico right here. He's in our apprentice program. He's learning the trade. And what I will do is I will get the saw, and I will take the saw, and I will cut the beef going down right through here. And this right here is what we call a long loin and or beef loin where you get your sirloins and your porterhouse and your T-bones off of. Just cut right here. Okay, next thing we're going to do, like I said, as of right now what I'm doing is I am just dropping this stuff down. I'm showing you when I drop the round down, I will show you, like I said, the different cuts before we do anything with it to the finished product. So the next step is what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the round off the hook over here. This is this is the Achilles tendon. When an athlete, when an athlete ruptures an Achilles tendon, this is the tendon th that they rupture. That's why they are out for so long. It is a very strong tendon as you can see it holds the it holds the hind up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right underneath here. I'm going to come down here down the shank and I got to bring this down through here. Uh, 
I'm getting this underneath. And there you go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this off right here. And this is around here for now. Okay. And last but not least, as you see, we have the hind is what you call is broke down. And here is the last piece, is the beef shank. So now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna show you a little bit about how the finished product will look after we cut it on the saw. I'm gonna start with the, I'm gonna start with the beef loin. I'm gonna peel back the soot. This you feed it to the people, a lot of people will come in for the beef soot, they will make bird balls in the winter time, mix it with uh, bur grass seed and uh, put it on their trees and as when they're, they're uh, drinking their coffee in the morning they're looking outside they're watching the birds eat. Clean this up a little bit. This lugger, as you see right here, is a lugger where we call it a, a throw-off lugger. Eventually, when we're done with everything, we will go through this. We will, we'll do what you call merchandising, getting stew and whatever else we can out of here. And, and we will show you the process of what goes on after that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm gonna get the long loin and I'm going to cut the sirloins off. I'm going to put this on a saw, right here, put this on a saw, I'm going to square this up, our cuts are normally three quarters of an inch, so now I'm going to run this through, you get an average of eight to ten sirloin, depending upon how thick you cut them. This is like I said, before looks like there's a lot of fat, but this is what a prime yield two beef looks like as we cut these down. All right, them are your sirloin. Now what we're going to do is, I'm going to have Rico. Scrape them to me, and he's going to put them over here on my block, and I'm going to trim them to turn them into a finished product to put in the case. Now what we're doing is we're going to get a case ready. Again, all the bones and stuff we'll put in the lugger, our throw-off lugger. We will go through, scrape the bones. Clean them up all the meat off of it, and we will do as later in the program what I told you how we're going to merchandise everything. And um, give me a little bit of fat. This steak right here is an old school steak. A lot of the people, older people would see this steak and they probably know what it is. This is a pin bone sirloin. This is what they call a pin bone sirloin. Today, other than if you ain't using swinging beef, you'll never see a pin bone sirloin. This is what it looks like. A beautiful piece of meat. Again, marbling, prime, yield to beef. We sell the best here. We, we do not underestimate what we sell. You get what you pay for. And as I go, like I said, we're going through this here as uh, this is what we do and how we do it. Um, my motto is, I've been in this business for 36 years. My motto is, you, you trim the piece of meat like you want to have it at home. 
and make the customer come back and be happy. This is an end cut, so we make that one a boneless. Like I said, put a nice trim on there. And um, it's a beautiful piece of meat. Oh, a short loin, beef short loin. As you can see, this is where, this is the last cut before the, the, the pin bone came off. And what we do with this is you get your porterhouse and you get your T-bones. And what we do is now is we'll, I will take this, up, this short loin and I will cut off the tail. And what we call this piece of meat right here is, is <laughs> what we got right here is, what we call this piece of meat is a skirt steak. Very, 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 very tender. Now I'll time the bone on these here. I'm just going to cut you a few steaks, show you what they look like, and um, then we will move on to the next segment. We normally, like I said, our bait, we cut steaks any size you want them, however thick you want them, and however thin you want them, then we can get. So now, like I said, I'm going to cut some steaks here. These first couple here are going to be tailless porterhouse. Okay, and I'm going to cut a couple more just to show you what it's about. Okay, and then here's what you're left with. This will be the piece of meat here that the, uh, the other half, the short one, where you've got your porterhouse. This is your strip, and this is your filet. I'll have Rico scrape them uh, porterhouse steaks, and we will continue on. Now what I'm doing here is, again, we're doing the trimming. You know, like I said, when you have a yield 2B prime, you do have a little bit of waste. But a reminder, you do not have, you know, you do not pay for the waste. We take pride in everything we do here. This is a family owned butcher shop, owned by Stevie B. And he is a pleasure to work for. Like I said, this is just a, 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 to show you basically what they look like as far as the marbling, as far as how it went from the hook to the block, to the tray, and to our, custo our valued customers. This here, you will have, when you cut swing and beef, you always have a few tailless porterhouse. And that's what we're looking at there. Look at that quality in that meat. And like I said, that's just a little bit, like I said, on a short loin, you normally get anywhere from 15, depending upon how you cut them, you get about 15, 17 steaks. You get uh, about eight, seven, eight porterhouse, and as well as seven to eight T-bones. Okay. Beef shank. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this off here. Again, this is the Achilles tendon. Take this off. And down here, we'll explain to you down here after we get going how what we do with all this product and everything else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this piece of meat. I'm going to cut this Achilles tendon off. going to set the fence at about an inch and a half and what I'm going to do is I'm, this is called the, the beef shank. I'm going to cut it across. These will be soup balls after we scrape the meat off of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross cut them like this. This is the variety of stuff that we sell here at the butcher block. A lot of 
places. You can't find this kind of stuff here. Um, Rico, again, will scrape. And we'll show you the finished product. These things right here, you put these in a pot of soup. Let them cook for three, four hours. These things will be very, very tender to eat. People say, ooh, beef shanks. You would, you would not believe. Again, this is the finished product, what we call be, uh, beef shanks. We carry these, we have these, ask for them. Normally they are in our, fr our freezer case. If we do not have them, if we are out of them, we will get them in and get it for you. All right, our next cut, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to the sirloin tip. This cut of meat right here, they call it, um, if you buy it like the grocery store chains get, this cut of meat is called a pilled knuckle. As of right now, it is not pilled, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean it up. I'm gonna clean it up again. Don't, you don't, you'll never have to worry about paying for the fat. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just I'm, I'm cleaning this up a little bit. On a roast you like to leave a little bit of the fat cap on there and you cook the roast with fat side up uh, so you don't dry out the roast. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this sirloin tip roast in half like this. We're going to clean it up a little bit. Clean it up a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tie it up. I'll get the string and we'll do what we'll call a butcher knot. We're going to tie this, put four or five strings on there. So if somebody wants to put it on a spit or however they want to cook it, it will not fall apart on them. And it makes the Rosa look a lot old, more old school. Now in a chain store, they do cut different on a sirloin tip. They do cut straight down. And here, this is the old school way where you cut it in half and you get two roasts out of it. As far as um, eating, it'll eat the same way no matter how, but um, this is how we do do this here on a sirloin tip. Again, this is what you call a peeled knuckle in a box. I'm gonna do the same thing to this side here. The man behind the camera, his, his, his name is Louie. He is our kibasi and our sausage guy. He is responsible through the course of the, of, of the year. We make four different kinds of kibbasis. He makes anywhere from 4,000 to 6,000 pounds of kibbasi a year, if not more. He also is responsible for making our sausages, which we carry 20 different kinds of sausages. He's been with us for seven years now. He is very good at what he does. Again, this is a sirloin tip roast from when you see me peel it out of the hind. Take it on the block, do what we gotta do, and that's your finished product. That's what you call a sirloin tip roast. Okay, next, we're gonna go to, you see this big thing right here? This is called the round. The beef round. This this piece of meat right here has three cuts of meat in it. One is a top round, one is a bottom round, one is an eye round. And now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna I'm gonna peel out this fat here, take this out of here, 
Take this out. Again, you got it. In order to do this kind of job, you have to have a very sharp knife is the key. So we're going to clean this up. We're going to pull what they call the H bone and or the pelvis bone out of here. And again, like I said, I'm going to put this in our throw off lugger. And like I said, as the segments go by, we will show you what we do with that stuff. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this H bone and or pelvis bone out. With people, your hip, this is basically what is your hip. I'm going to peel this out right now. And I will show you what it looks like. Rico's learning. He is coming along very well. It is a family affair at the butcher block. Everybody works together, has a lot of pride in what they do. Now, as I get going here, I'm pulling this apart. And like I said, this is what you call the H bone and or pelvis bone. This is what it looks like. Yeah, and give me another tray. Okay, and like I said, we'll come back and clean a little bit of the meat off of that, and uh, we'll go from there. Now my next segment, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to, I'm going to, Build an inside round out and or top round. I'm gonna to take the heavy bark off. I'm gonna put it in it, I'm gonna put it down here, clean up the heavy bark. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seam this top round out. Again, old school way of doing things. To make an old fashioned roll rump roast, I would normally cut it right here and I would make an old-fashioned rump roast out of it but this way being that round steaks is not a very 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 popular item off the inside mm -hmm. rounds we call with you seaming it out and we could get more out of the product as you could see Leo put the, Leo put the camera down in there as you can see, everything seams out. What I mean by seaming is right here. It's all right there. It's amazing how you have an animal, how your body's put together. See, as I pull that apart, how it is seaming out. And that's how we're put, we're put together. Okay, this, this kind of meat now is what we call, again, I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm not going to cut anything off of it or trim anything until we're ready to sell it. This piece of meat right here, you get, you'll get top rounds, steaks, you can get London broils, you can get, we, we cut our round steaks boneless, and uh, you could get a lot of uh, top round roast. This roast here is um, good to put on a spit keeping the cap on there so it does not dry out. I got a piece of meat here. Um, it's called a top uh, top blade. I am making I am making some flat iron steaks out of it. It's more of a muscle meat and what I'm doing basically is I'm peeling the gristle out off the off of the piece of meat. Again, very tender. It's a muscle meat. You have to eat it hot. This is part of, like I said, the beef. As you get into the chuck, it's more. It's into the shoulder of the of the uh, of the chuck. You could call it a Spencer roast. 
And this here is called a flat iron steak. As you go to a restaurant, that's what you'll get. All right, now the next segment. The next segment we're gonna go to is we're going to peel out the eye round roast. And again, it, it seems out very easily. It's, um, like I said, an eye round roast. Uh, very good roast. Um, you could use it for many different things. You could use it for an eye round roast. You could use eye round steaks. Um, and or everything else and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a quick trim on this and I'm gonna show you basically what it's gonna look like when it's done make cube steaks out of it you can do a lot of different things you can make beef jerky which is very good out of a piece of eye around Like I said, it's, um, it's a very good piece of meat. Again, you leave a little bit of the cap on there. When you cook it, you trim it down a little bit. And this is what you call your eye around roast. You trim it down a little bit. And basically, you, that's what an eye what an eye around roast looks like. Right there. That's an eye around roast. Okay, now I am going to continue on. And we are going to peel out the fiblia. This is a kneecap. I am going to peel out this big fiblia bone out of the out of the round, and that's going to leave me with one piece of meat left out of this out of this round, and that'll be called the bottom round, where you get your block rump roast. You can get bottom round steaks. You can get stew. You can get many things. This is why we do it this way, unless it is recommended by a customer that they want full cut, bone in, round steaks, then we do do that. But you do not have the options of having a lot more meat. You have more meat this way, you'll get more roast, you'll get more cuts out of it. And that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. That's one of the bigger bones other than the femur bone in your body, in your leg. Again, we'll put that together. And here's how it works. Where your hip bone, your hip, as I showed you, your hip into there, and that's what is, is where your drive at is when you are walking. That's how you get your rotation. All right. Okay, again, now what we're working on now, the final piece of the hind quarter is we're going to make, we're going to, I'm going to clean up, I'm going to clean up the bottom round, bottom round flat. What I'm doing here is just like I said, we're just cleaning it up. I'm taking the shank off, the boneless shank. And then again, we're cleaning everything up. Like I said, there is a lot of waste involved, but as, you know, it, it most of the stuff turns into ground meat. I mean, when you, you know, when you invest when you invest in the side, you probably lose thirty percent. Um, uh, that's the way it is. That's the rule of the thumb. What I'm doing here, like I said, I'm cleaning it up. And this will become a bottom round flat or and or uh, we uh, rump roast 
which again you could get steaks out of, you can get uh, stew. Uh, this is the reason why we do this like this because of the more selection that you can get out of out of the cattle, out of the round. So we can get, if you do order a beef, you could get more for, more bang for your buck. And again, this is what a bottom round flat looks like. Right there, that's a bottom round flat. And what we normally do is, I, I we do tie them, we tie them like we do a sirloin tip roast, but I'm not going to do that right now. You've seen that. And this is what, like I said, this is what a bottom round flat looks like. Okay, basically that is the, all the cuts basically of a hind quarter. Other than we have our trim off lugger, what we call over here. We will take this, get the lean stuff, we'll get stew out of it. Well, merchandise will break down the fat and the lean and what happens with this stuff is we'll show you down the road as we clean this up we put it in the lugger down here and we make our ground chuck we do not get no tube beef in here so you do not have to worry about having no problems with E. coli and or everything is fresh as it can be it comes off the hook the work is done to it put through the grinder and down the road segment we will show you a bunch of different patties that we made with this trim down the road okay that basically right there is the the hind quarter now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put all everything down here again we're gonna show you all the cuts basically again and then we're gonna go on to the front quarter is basically all of our cuts out of our hind quarter like I said as when we, we go through this this lugger that we have right here we merchant what I mean by merchandising it out is we merchandise it out and what we do is we get the as, like I said we get beef stew out of it we get our porterhouse here like I said I'm not going to cut you know a bunch of them but I just wanted to show you the porterhouses the bone-in sirloins this is the block rump roast and or bottom round roast. We go to the beef shanks, cross cut beef shanks, to the sirloin tip roast, to the eye round roast, and then last but, but not least is the top round roast. I left the fat and everything on there just because like I said when I'm ready I get an order, I will trim the fat off of it and get it ready for the customer. As well as when I talk about merchandising I'll go back to merchandising means this what I do is is I merchandise everything out I will merchandise all of the stuff out me and Rico and merchandise it out and we will put it in a lugger in our trim lugger right here and what we get out of this stuff right here is like I said is our ground chuck our bulk ground chuck we do not get nothing in. We get no we get no trimming in at all. Everything comes off the block, off of our cuts that we sell. It goes into a lugger. And this is the honest to goodness ground meat. Where no additives, no preservatives. Um, it, 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 it's very taste it's better tasting than the tube ground meat. And that is what we basically do when I talk about merchandising. We take this stuff right here that's in this lugger, and like I said, we stew it, we get cube steaks, we get, get we and we get our bulk ground meat, and then after this we will show you, I will show you what we get, our pat, some of our fresh patties that we get, that we, we get out of our trim. So basically that covers our hind, and now we will move on to our front, and we'll show you some stuff on the front. Give us a few minutes. Okay, again, this is the front quarter. We're going to show you how 
and what we get out of a front quarter. Not all the cuts, but we're going to show you some cuts. Uh, again, like I said, this is what you call the plate. Here down. This is what the navel, this is the navel, the chest of the cow. Here's where your beef brisket comes out. Right here. This piece right here. And again, we will show you all about that. I will show you the difference between a packer and we possibly, we could probably clean it up and give you a, a, a regular brisket. Here's your ribeye up here. And again, we have a front shank. And we will show you the different cuts like English round bone, English blade, and the regular full blade chuck roast, as well as the English blade chuck roast. As you get older in life, and uh, I've picked up tons of these, uh, you learn how to try to what they call savior the body. So today there's many ways you could do these breaks, as in you could pick this piece of meat up, put it over there, put it on the block, and do it over there. Well, what I'm going to do here today is, I'm going to, like I said, you're looking at possibly 170 to 190 pounds. Not saying that I can't pick it up, but we're going to do it different. Each uh, front has 12 bones. What you have to do is you have to come up from the bottom five ribs. One, two, three, four, five. So that should leave you with seven ribs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on your rib roast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to put my knife through here like this. Then I'm going to come back this way. And we're going to go just like this. <clears throat> one second. I'm coming across here as you see. And then I'm going to do the same thing as well as over here. Okay. Now, is I'm going to take this saw and I'm going to saw this like this. It will not fall. It'll just drop down. Okay. Um, now I have to wait for my saw guy. As you can see, this is a beautiful chuck. Marbled. And we will, we will show you what goes on here. Okay. All right, Rico. What Rico's going to do here is I'm going to pick this up. Rico's going to saw this through. And what I mean by, like I said, as you get older, you try to get a little bit smarter. Instead of picking up almost 200 pounds, you're picking up 100. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick this up like this. Rico's going to saw. Saw through. I'm going to take this to the block. I'm going to set it on the block. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do here, again, this is the front shank. I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to cut the front shank off. Old school. Saw through it. Hit it. Not ready yet. One second. There you go. Through the bone. Take the knife and go like this. Okay, and then this is your this is right here. Is your brisket. I'm gonna go across here like this. Right like this, and I'm going to cut this off. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is, is we have a chuck. I'm going to cut a couple cut I'm going to cut a couple chuck roasts off of here. Show you some differences of what we have. This first chuck roast I'm going to cut. What I'm going to do is 
I am going to cut what they call some English round bone. You'll get three of them. They're beautiful roasts. Okay. Here again, I'm going to have Rico scrape them. And he'll throw them over to me. And we'll show you what they look like. Okay, what we're doing is like again, we're getting this roast ready, case re what we call case ready to sell. Trimming it up again. I was taught to trim the piece of meat like you want to be treated on your own day. <laughs> and like I said, that's, this is a beautiful round bone chuck roast. The English side. What you get in the store is right over here, over. That's called a shoulder clod. I'm going to do the same thing with this. Clean this up. Again, that's what they look like. There's, a, again, a beautiful... English round bone chuck roast. Beautiful. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to cut some chuck roast. I'm going to show you a little bit of difference. Uh, again, I'm not going to cut the whole thing. I'm just going to show you a little bit of it, a portion of it. Just to show you what it looks like and the different cuts that come out of a chuck roast. Scrape them up one, buddy. Okay, what I'm doing here again is I'm getting this chuck roast. Trimming it up. Getting a case ready and take this muscle out of here. This piece of, this piece of roast right here is called a, the chuck roast, bone-in chuck roast. Most of the time you go into the stores that have, uh, have swinging beef or if they have, if they have um, if they have chuck roast that have the bone in it, this is normally what they do. And this one right here is called an English blade roast. Again, getting it ready. And this one right here, again, beautiful roast. That's an English blade roast. And the other roast that we have here is the old school roast. When people had big families and they had a lot of kids, this is normally what they would buy. They would get a full, they call this a full blade chuck roast. What, mean, what I'm meaning is, by a full blade, is, I'm getting it ready. This is a full blade chuck roast right here. That's what they call a full blade chuck roast right there. And what we have, if you would cut this in half, is another old school cut where you cut it right here. People would sometimes come in the butcher shop back in the day and ask for the seven, seven blade chuck roast. Here it is right here. Here's your seven. You'd cut it right here. That would be it right there. That's a seven blade chuck roast. That's what they would ask for. But that is what a full blade chuck roast consists of. That is a little bit of, like I said, of what 
what the chuck roasts are all about. Again, I just cut a portion of them. I didn't cut them all. Uh, we will go back over it again and uh, take it from there. Now, the next piece of uh, property is we're going to deal with the beef brisket. Again, this is called the navel. This is your chest of the cow in between the two front shoulders. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my knife through here. I'm going to bone this out. Again, how beef seams out. Like I told you on the hind. See how it seams out? You put the knife in there and you pull it apart. It's amazing. Our own bodies do that. Okay. Now, again, we throw that in the throw-off lugger. And what I have here now, I'm going to clean it up a little bit, is I have what we're going to call, it's going to be a packer brisket. Most of the time, as you watch your pit masters, you watch the shows, they use is what they call a packer brisket. Meaning by a packer brisket is, is they leave all the fat on the brisket. So when they do smoke it, when they do smoke it, you smoke fat side up. This is what you call the packer brisket. And like when they're talking about The point of the brisket, a lot of, lot of them smoking guys in those sm tournaments, they like to use the point of the brisket because more or less it is more tender. That consists of this right here. You would take your knife, come right through here, peel this off, and that is called, this is the point of the brisket right here. And as you see the marbling, this is gonna the most tender piece of the brisket that's available. That's what they mostly use. And what they do is they'll marinate it, they'll trim some of the fat off of it, and they smoke it. That's called the point. And without the point, you got this piece of the brisket. It's considered a flat. This whole brisket right here is considered a, a, a packer brisket. And that's a little bit about the brisket family. Um, uh, we will go on now to the ribeye and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the ribeye we'll break it down we'll show you I'm gonna show you some tomahawk ribeyes I'm gonna show you a couple regular bone-in ribeyes again I'm not going to cut a lot but I'm just gonna show you what it consists of so that's where we're at Tomorrow, when we need, we need more chuck roasts, we'll cross cut them, and then uh, we we'll get to the end. And what we normally do with the end is you could either, which consists of the neck. What we'll do is we'll cut it down to about here, and I'll take this piece off over here, and I normally cross cut it with the neck bone on it. This is where the head. This is where the head of the cow lied. And I'll cross cut this, and what we have is beef chuck for soup. A little bit more cheaper than a chuck roast. If you're not going to make a big pot of soup, you have that option. So I'm going to pull this off right here. This piece of meat right here, what I'm cutting off, this piece of meat right here is what they call an inside skirt which will be very tender again for fajitas and or whatever you would like it to be so what we're going to do here now we're going to explain a little bit about the ribeye um, uh, tomahawk ribeyes are a very popular thing in restaurants what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to take this other, the top half of the plate off. And I will show you back, what I mean by that is people back in the day probably heard of what a, a, piece, a cut called 
plate boil. Here momentarily, I'm going to show you what plate boil is. Again, that's a thing of the past. And uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it's all about and what it is. Cut to the top of the point, the highest point of the up, up, up the top of the beef. You come down the beef. Okay. This right here is what you call plate boil. What you do is clean this all up, cut it across the bone, would be ideal for soup. And or what we normally do is we bone this all out as well as it, it will, like I showed you on the hind, it will go into the trimmings for our grinds and or patties. So now what I'm going to show you now is a little bit about the ribeye. Like I said, the important, you know, tomahawk ribeye is a big thing in restaurants. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Normally on a ribeye, when you break, you cut right here. But what I'm going to do with this is, I'm going to leave it longer, so I'm going to show you a couple tomahawks. So I'm going to cut this down like this. Cut that down like that. I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to cut this off. Okay, and again, this is going to be what you call, this piece of meat right here, is going to be what you call, we get our beef short ribs off of. Or oriental style ribs, which are very, very good. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with our ribeye. Normally, I will, what I'll do is, I will... Clean that up. And normally a tomahawk ribeye. Well, what I'll do first is I will show you a couple. I'll show you a couple bone-in ribeyes. What we do. The first thing we have to do here is I got to take this down and I got to pull this cap off. What they call the deckle. The deckle off of this rib. And that consists of this right here. What I'm doing is I'm pulling the deco off the rib. As you can see again, it seams right out. It's uh, very easy. This is this kind of meat right here is what you call rib lifter meat and or cat meat. Back in the days, in the 80s, when you got prime rib roast, they left this piece of meat on there. But now, the way they merchandise, how they merchandise everything, it has, the market has changed. And what they do is, like I said, they use this. It's called cat meat, rib lifter meat. A lot of places will make their beef jerky out of this. Believe it or not. Some, you know, you could use this for your stew or cube meat again this is what I'm trying to tell you what rib lifter meat is it's this piece of meat right here you take your knife come down through here cut this right here and that is what they call rib lifter meat okay Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this other piece of meat off right here. Peel this other piece of the cap off. Put it in our throw off. And I'm going to take this off what they call the, the rubber. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to chime the bone.
what I did right there is I took that back and part of the spine bone out. So I could peel these back into this ribeye off. That's why they call it a semi boneless ribeye. We'll peel this off. And again, put it in our throw off. And then, and then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to take this what they call rubber band out. This, believe it or not, is a tendon in the back of the spine. It is very, it is very, very strong. It's a tendon that's, as you can see, very, very strong. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few show you a tomahawk and I'm going to show you a few bone in ribeye. Do this normally as you did now said it's like almost two pounds. Normally what they do is is they'll go through, come straight down, and you get what they call one full bone. On a tomahawk. And I'll do this on this one too as well. Cut it through. And then we will show you what it's all about. As you can see, you go into your high end restaurants in the bigger cities, this is a very popular piece of meat. One more. And then as far as like I said the other ones, the bone in ribeyes. Where it concludes that is you cut it off right here. And you have the same procedure as you did over there. Okay, now we're gonna cut short ribs, bone in short ribs. Basically, like I said, each plate has three bones. Basically what you do, put it up on a saw, cross cut it. You can also do, like a lot of people do in the summertime, uh, they do cut oriental short ribs, which is cut about a quarter to a half inch. And they braise them, put them in the grill, put them on the grill or in the oven. Okay, basically, like I said, this is a modified cut of basically what you get out of your front quarter. Um, again, we'll go over this. This is your beef short ribs. Right here. Uh, this is what we call your packer brisket. These again here are your round bone English chuck roast, beautiful roast. This here is an old school cut how they used to cut back in the day, a full blade chuck roast, what they call this. And like I said before, a lot of times back in the day, you'd get some old timers would come to the butcher shop and they'd ask for a seven bone chuck roast. And what a seven bone chuck roast is, you cut this right off over here, and here's your seven bone. That's an old school cut. Here is a regular chuck roast, right here. And this cut right here is English chuck roast, bone in. And then we will go to our ribeyes right now. As you see, like I told you before, 
in the in the the full, uh, in the restaurants, in the higher end restaurants and steakhouses, they push the tomahawk ribeye. And here is what you're talking about as a tomahawk ribeye. Normally, they are one one full bone, as you see, and they French the bone out. That is a tomahawk ribeye. And here is your basic bone-in ribeye. The difference is with the bone-in ribeye and the tomahawk ribeye, as you can see, tomahawk ribeye has the longer bone. The, the regular ribeye has the shorter bone. Basically that's what it is all about uh, here today. We were going to show you after this segment here, we're going to show you again, Louie's going to shoot you a picture of what we call our throw off lugger. We got to go through this, merchandise this out. Louie will shoot you a picture of the ground chuck that's on, its, on the grinder right there that we make fresh every day off of the block. That's, that is the product right there. That is a true 8515 ground meat with no additives or preservatives. And then that is basically your cuts of your front quarter of beef. Okay guys, this is what we were talking about at the end of the segment once we get it all said and done. Once we turn this product here into what we need for stew, cube steaks, and everything else, turn it into trimmings. As he showed, as Louis showed you, the ground meat that was on its on the, on the uh, grinder, the true 8515, no additives or preservatives. And here is our finished product with our patties, our staple patties, our regular chuck patties, our steak burgers and our bacon cheddar burgers, made fresh out of the beef that you just saw that we just cut up. This is what we pride ourselves on, freshness and quality. We have like 15 different burgers that we make. Go to the website, check it out, come on in, and enjoy the shopping experience. As far as that goes, basically that's a rough cut of what, what we do uh, in general and uh, hope to see you in the future. Come and try us out. Thank you very much.